Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I'm here with uh, Patreon supporter Darius Engel. This is what you guys can do if you support at the $25 level. We can do these kind of cool, uh, you know, conversations or interviews, whatever you want to call it, over Skype. So, uh, Darius, um, first of all, let me ask you uh, what made you decide to get involved with um, – you know, independent media and and stuff like that. When I was um, when I was in uh, basically just after I got out of high school, uh, I got really politically involved. Uh, I started just reading a lot more books other than just the stuff they were giving me in school, and uh, it just happened coinciding. My first election was uh, two thousand in West Palm Beach. I still have the butterfly ballot. I I, I don't want to ever think or hear uh, dimpled chat again. Wow, <laughs> it was it was intense. Uh, if you see the movie Recount, uh, there's a scene in there where there's uh, people you know protesting for the revote. I was actually at the actual event. Uh, obviously, I wasn't for, in the filming; that was a recreation. But uh, I was in that crowd because uh, I wanted revote. And then after that, it just it skyrocketed left. Actually, <laughs> uh, more and more, I I stuck with the Democrats for for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually. I literally remember getting uh, horrific notes. I was in Florida, like at the time I was in Florida. Um, and uh, I got horrific notes for just having John Kerry uh, and then uh, you know, Obama uh, all the way through. So, But then, you know, after saying Obama's second term, you know, just I was like, I didn't see any of the promises, you know, he was making. And I was just, I was hearing, you know, TYT, a little bit more yeah, different back then, uh, different format. Uh, of course, I followed it that since the beginning. Uh, so you know, TRT got me interested, and um, then I started writing some articles, little stuff. I was nervous, uh, so I started with what I knew, which is kind of just I watched a lot of movies, I like media. So um, I, I wrote some interesting things. Um, I think I I wrote an article um, about um, uh, CBS Kid Nation, mm. which. Was uh, I lambasted it. It was a very short lived show, horrible. <laughs> and that, but, you know, the only people that would take me out was left wing newspapers. Uh, and uh, so I figured, you know, how the heck with it? You know, I'm just going to go full on with it. And I just started writing some more articles, getting more involved online, um, trying to pull away from any trolling. Uh, I'm old enough to, 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 you know, before, I remember when trolls became a thing. Right. Or was a thing, and I was like, "What is the whole troll?" So uh, I realized that I stopped myself after a while. I was like, "Oh, uh, that thing now. I don't want to be part of that." So um, I got more into you know just studying, reading, um, and I got actually um, uh, very you know very uh, credentials with the U.S. Press Corps, so I could go into the uh, Seattle. Because uh, that's where I am now. I moved from Florida to Seattle. I just had to. Uh, <laughs> I had to get away from the crazy. Right. Just, just, just way to put it. Um, and so I'm now in Seattle, and uh, the, uh, the election, the election, Kishama Swan, which is really, really fantastic. Um, independent, but uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't part of the uh, organization Socialist Alternative, but I was very close to them. And uh, so basically, um, yeah, I mean, after that, just snowball. I've been helping with us, you know, independent media, helping with Patreon, uh, spreading it out. Uh, and that's, that's where I am now, and I uh, sort of, uh, I guess you could say I, I finished up and been with the uh, 1917 Live thing, which is recently, and that's where I am. Well, let's get let's get into that now. So, what tell us about tell people what the 1917 Live event was and what what happened there, what your involvement and everything, so people give people a little backstory. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try and make it a little, a little quick because uh, they can look online. Uh, it was a, a project uh, done uh, with uh, in coordination with RT Digital and RT. Uh, so that was uh, very fascinating. It was an educational uh, program. Uh, where we uh, took on roles uh, and try as if um, Twitter, what if Twitter existed in 1917? Uh, and uh, I uh, actually was, the contri- I didn't get paid at all, not a cent. This was all my own time. Uh, and they, wrote, they even mentioned that many times. I was a contributor free. Uh, but it actually was, was fascinating because I was very much, as I've mentioned, studying. So I had all this information in my head. And uh, we become characters and we tweet to each other. Uh, Lenin would tweet events out as it would happen. Uh, there was there was a, a bot, but it wasn't. It, it was. I will admit uh, that the New York Times was only a bot because it wanted to tweet out every article it could as they were coming out. 
Oh. So I knew the person who ran the bot, you know, but he, he was a real person. And he was also a contributor. He actually was not also paid. He, he helped me a lot. Um, and uh, so I was reading newspapers every day so people could join in, follow the hashtag, read what the New York Times was saying, what Lenin was saying, what other people were saying. And there was actually only a small group that was, I mean, that were actually like, well, not small, but there was a solid group that were part of it, you know, part of the RT Digital, their campaign, which did a fantastic job. And then there were all the contributors mm-hmm. and the sort of like 1917 uh, crowd, uh, was, was that the contributors were called. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you just basically follow the 1917 revolution uh, from the hashtag uh, from the beginning. And, and, and uh, I think just this around December is when it officially ended. Although I and some others, uh, as far as the help, the help with and, uh, New York Times, uh, a live one, uh, said, we can keep this going. So uh, I said, you know, hey, this is a, they put out a video saying, oh, this is nice. This is end. It was a nice one of the project, which is really nice. And I think I tweeted down to it because it was John Reed. And I said, oh, um, oh maybe, maybe this is Western propaganda. Western propaganda. I don't know about this. I'm going to keep going. I, I'm going to keep tweeting. I've got a book to write, which is, of course, John Reed's going to be writing uh, 10 Days to Shift the World. And uh, I've, there are events that I've got you know, built up in my mind I'm going to be you know, tweeting out as he is because I'm continuing on with hashtag 1918 Live. Was anybody uh, Trotsky? There was Trotsky. There was Trotsky indeed. He had uh, many more followers than Stalin. <laughs> many. Molotov and I will get an argument, I'm sure, later about it. But uh, he's still on there. He's, it was still, he's very active, too. Uh, shout out to the uh, to uh, the, that comrade online. Uh, John Reed uh, passed away in 21. I was actually asked in an interview on, R- on, um, on the RT on, um, did, um, online, in an interview online, uh, what I was going to do, you know, cause, you know, John Reed passed away in 21 of typhus, uh, in, uh, I think it was just after, his, um, the, the third Congress room in Baku. Uh, and, um, I said, well, I guess I'll be tweeting as John Reed's ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I'm, 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 I just, I find it fascinating and it's, it's, I have no interest in, in trying to build it up as far as like, uh, gain anything by it. I just love being able to get the information out there and, it shocks me every day, the similarities between what's going on today and what was going on in 1917 and, and what literally all the time I'm saying, this is what was going on 100 years ago. I'll talk to friends or family members and I'll be like, you know, it, it, to the point where they get sick about it. You know, and then they'll be like, you know, yeah, I know, well, nine, yeah, 100 years ago. And I'm like, no, you got to understand here you know, that this party was doing this. But if you look at the Democrats and the socialists, if you sort of look at the, the split right now, 100 years ago, I don't mean to get off, you know, onto this, but it's the history thing. If, if you get, uh, if you look at it, the Socialist Party, 100, go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say, um, how, how has the sort of, or what was the online reaction been? And how, how many people do you think are, are seeing from the the purpose of your event, um, I don't know if this was the sole purpose, but saw the parallels from what was going on in 1917 to what's happening now, um, yeah. because it's very it's very interesting. You know, I, I, I reference this a lot when I read uh, Chris Hedges' Death of the Liberal Class in the beginning of that book. He talks about how uh, Woodrow Wilson created this propaganda machine to sell World War One to the American people and look what's being, and we're constantly being sold. Oh, we got to go invade Syria. We got to go to North Korea. We got to attack Russia. Like we got it at, at, at every day. So, so how many people were, were, you know, just sort of passive viewers of your event that maybe you think they saw the connection to this? Right. Yeah. That's a great question. And, uh, because I was so in, into involved, especially from the community side, I got a little bit more interactive. Um, I, I would say that there was a, ver- a very good number, because uh, when you looked into the conversations between each other, uh, you were seeing them trying to say, hey, hold on, wait a minute, this is kind of sounding familiar. Fake news became a hashtag within it, uh, because they, and I have to admit, the New York, I think the New York Times has been going up and down because the, the, the fake news was people were seeing that. Mm-hmm. So a good number of people were, were seeing the parallels between how Wilson a hundred years ago, you know, just flipped on a dime, 
and how the media then, or how online, I, I refer to it as the press, because it really wasn't called the media 100 years ago. But the press, Hearst Press, all that was just spewing out New York Times every day. All these kind of building up to war, making the Bolsheviks as if they were these monsters. Yes, there were many issues and problems. There's a civil war going on 100 years ago right now. But people don't even realize. Uh, and these were an interesting things that people... So, Sophie, I'm so sorry. This, uh, you can edit this out. Sophie, I'll give it to you back. <laughs> Sophie. I know. You can't talk to Grant. Later. Later. Sorry about that. Uh, she's very excited. She has her own opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, where was I? Uh, so, um, so I totally forgot where I was. I apologize. Uh, you were talking about, um, you know, <laughs> the connections from how the how the Bolsheviks were being depicted. While yes, it was a civil war, and there, I'm sure there was some brutality happening, as is the case in any civil war. But how it was being depicted in the American media versus the reality of it. Right. Yeah. I, um, Definitely, people were, were noticing, and, and and I was trying to also drop hints and and in the way I was writing things. Uh, I mean, you could say that I was skewing it, suppose, because I would try and make it clear that this isn't exactly a, what was G- Reed actually said, but it likely is what he thought. This is not exactly things. So I I noticed it, and people picked up on that. Uh, they noticed like how, um, uh, for for example, the with the uh, with the air with the strike. Uh, the, the bombing, you know, all that, how, how it was played in the media, how it's sort of been you know, ignored or played off. Yet Wilson did the same thing. Like whole areas of the war were either ignored or totally misrepresented. And another thing I noticed, and, and because literally for a whole year during the project, I was looking into it and reading the actual articles, little old fashioned ones. There's very little, if any, actual, uh, uh, you know, people saying that, you know, this is who said this. It's just like somebody said this. The, the who are they, you know, the right. OSA is somewhere. So, yeah, there, there were problems, of course. I mean, it was it was starting. They were being immediately attacked. Mm-hmm. And uh, also the, 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 the question of sovereignty came in. As, and towards the end, especially, the project ended. And I wanted to keep it going because people were seeing, you know, about the, in, in, you know, like Ukraine especially, the war and civil war in Ukraine going on 100 years ago. It had, did touch on a lot of people's uh, uh, buttons on on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, they definitely picked up on that because there were there are those sides. I mean, there, right. there's a clear side within Ukraine. I mean, there there are areas in the in the West that were bordered. They were parts of different because people forget, you know, that, that during this time borders were changing. They were move, moving all around. Right. But the majority of Ukraine was always Russia. It was even from the beginning. Uh, but the problem that was then is that it was being represented in a way that it favored the, uh, the Western, the, the banks. The news often talked about um, uh, how well, you know, everything's going with the stock market or, or getting people as if, they, as if it bothered their own personal lives, you know, as, if, as if the stock market then, you know, or as if a certain amount of money being made was good for their personal lives was going to affect them. They, you know, bring it out and say, oh, this is wonderful. You know, this is why you should be supporting the war. Because we're, you know, getting more jobs building ships, building weapons, you know, and uh, it's but at the same time ignoring all that was actually going on, like mm-hmm. the, the debates, the politics. A hundred years ago, in the United States, there was a significant anti-war effort that was just completely being suppressed. And that's another thing that people were also picking up on, that I'm glad they're picking up on it, was the suppression of the media. hundred years ago... It would. It moved from the from the es, uh, from the espionage, espionage act, and it's about to actually May May eighth. May, 8th, May 8th, uh, it's uh, be the es, uh, the sedition act it actually becomes official. The sedition act. So before that, it was the espionage act. Now it's going to become the sedition act, and they're going to arrest. They're going to arrest John Reed. He's going to get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they got his papers. They they accosted him when he came back from Russia. Uh, they literally strip searched him. I researched it. They strip searched him as soon as he came back. They took everything, all his notes. But he got it back. He fought it. Well, so, let me the, the, let me ask you this now. Um, as we you're drawing these parallels from 1970 to today, where do you think what is going to happen to America? What what what? <laughs> 
what do we do here? I mean, it's 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 a question I ask myself. It's a question I ask a lot of progressives and people in the independent media. What do we do here when this corruption is so rampant? The military industrial complex. I mean, they're pushing everything. The, the the mainstream media is pro-war. I mean, it's it's there's very little. There's not an anti-war movement in America anymore right now. So what do we do? How do we move forward here? It, it's it's a difficult question uh, because I've I've seen that too. I mean, uh, just there's been articles written about it. Um, I I, just, I don't even feel the amount of, of anti-war movement that we felt during the again during the first. You know, I, there was definitely there. I was at protests. We were there was people out, but now it's it's become almost like a like a fiction. And and in the in in way in 1917, a lot a lot of people were more concerned. They were they were they they were jeered up on fear. Articles, uh, the cartoons. Uh, that was that was the day. Remember look, that uh, while film started, they had movies and stuff. Charlie Chaplin was doing things. Mm-hmm. Film and so on wasn't really part of it. People weren't getting uh, even any type of news other than papers. So to them, those cartoons, the, the, the images that they were show, shown, that's all the information they had. So no wonder people were lining up in certain areas and or saying, no, you're you're all anarchists. Like, for example, they would label people whole swaths of, 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 of groups. The left was all anarchists. Didn't matter whether you were communist, socialist, didn't matter you were anarchist. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult because now we need to really amp up the, uh, the anti-war movement, especially now with, uh, with everything going on. It, it's really important. Do you think there's a third party that's either in existence now or needs to be formed that could help push this? You know, I was I voted for Jill Stein. Uh, I live in Washington, so I got to vote my conscience. Uh, and uh, I, I, although I, if I lived in Florida, I still would have voted for Jill Stein. Uh, I, I'm proud of it. Uh, so, but you know, I fought for a while. I was very trusting to Bernie Sanders. I, I followed him devotedly. I was here. I would say 100 feet away from him when the Black Lives Matter event happened uh, live, uh, which has never actually been fully broadcast exactly what happened. The people there that night, I mean that day, literally were quiet and just very patient. And all of a sudden, just things just blew up oddly at the end. So it was just a very interesting situation. But I was very much into the campaign. Mm-hmm. But you know, now after the, after the, uh, the, um, after the convention and, and knowing what's been coming out, the leaks... I would have to say that we need a third party. We need a real third party. Uh, I mean, I want to say the Greens, but I just, I feel like that that all of a sudden that there may be too dismissiveness. And I'm not and I'm not in the whole camp that believes that there's that we can do anything with the Democrats. Right. Uh, it's been it's been tried before uh, on the left. Uh, it, it was used, it used to be called the French Turn. Um, uh, I actually, sadly, at the moment, I can't recall exactly the, the original, you know, why the party I know it had to do with the French Socialists. Hmm. But it was tried in most recently in England. Uh, the Socialist Party had its famous split with Militant. And they tried what they were accused of trying a French turn. As in, you were all Democrats, but you were left-wing Democrats. You're, you're trying to enter our party and change it. So they just expelled them. They just kicked them out. Like in 1919, is going to happen to John Reed and split the Socialist Party. They just kick out the left. So I feel that even if progressives are able to enter or do a fr- or try a French turn by entering into the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is still like a club. Right. They're just going to just okay, fine. We're going to expel the left wing. We win. That's it. I mean, I I was hoping that Bernie was going to do something more significant and was going to literally. You know, just just at, at the convention, be like, I'm sorry, I cannot support Hillary Clinton. The thing, I'm sorry, and, uh, and, I, and I won't. But he, I, he didn't, and, and well, I don't know. Maybe he he, he played a, a good role. He tried to play a role, and I, and I feel it's weird now to see him. It's weird because there. I understand. Looking back, I understand why he did that in '16. I don't understand why today. Because now is the time to make the bid for 2020. I don't understand why now today he's still like, well, the Democrats, we're going to give him a shot. Like, why isn't he just going, you know what? Hey, Tulsi. Hey, Nina. 
we're starting our own party, you know, or we're, or we're, we're, we're merging the socialists and the greens together and we're, we're doing this. And he's the most, he's still the most popular politician in America. And I don't understand why he's been an independent his whole life. Why, why is he, he's been telling people to be independent. He's been telling people to vote third party. And, and, and now he's like, well, we got our revolution and we're going to reform the Democrat. What? I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. It's confusing. It's like <laughs> it's like the rebels in Star Wars being like, OK, you guys. All right. We're going to. OK, I figured it out. We're going to join the empire. and We're going to change it from the inside. <laughs> we're going to get in their minds. We'll just build up our numbers. We'll start talking to the troops. Urs. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to do it. You know, the, the, it's. Hey, I, I do understand why he did it, you know, at the convention. I was upset. I was hoping he was going to do something, you know, but at, when I realized he wasn't, you know, I was mad. I was especially mad. At, I'll be honest. I was very mad at Silver Silverman and, and how the, the whole Bernie wing in the convention was just, you know, ignored. They were ignored on the cameras. They didn't want to be seen. Yeah. They want to have this whole fake unity. But they're terrified, you know, because they, they have, we have a two-party system, which, which is literally, it's a, it's a joke to me. Because when I was growing up, I was and uh, I, I was born in '78. You know, growing up uh, in, in in New Jersey area, you know, northern New Jersey, we were always taught one party state, Soviet Union. You don't want to be like Soviet Union. You don't only allow one party there. You don't want to be like China. You only got one party. Cuba, one party. That's horrible. But then you know things changed. Soviet Union fell. There was you know, some issues. They said, oh, but, but China. Mm, yeah, they're 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 not exactly capitalist. Uh, you, they only have the one party, and that party tells you who. Can, uh, there's not real elections there. They tell you what candidates you can vote for. And I thought to myself, recent, you know, during the election, I thought to myself, I feel like we have one party, the Republic Democrats, and they decide uh, which candidates we're permitted to vote for. Right. But they're never going to allow another party. So we rail on. Let's get with the risk. You know, in these other countries, regime change. We got to support the third parties. But most people don't realize the opposition, major opposition. I don't agree with them at a lot of points, but the major opposition in Russia is the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. They're the, they're the, if you want the major opposition party is them. I don't, I literally don't agree with a lot of their problems. I, I'm far different than a Stalinist. I don't agree with those, those points at all. But they're the opposition. But they don't, but that's never mentioned in the United States. Right. That's, as if the media would mention anything that didn't just, you know, want to raise clicks or be more interesting. It's well, become a parody of itself. It really is. I mean, it's a thing Jimmy Jimmy Dore always says, which is actually, he goes, I'd actually like to see a second party <laughs> because we, we really only have the one party and there's a little Republican wing of it and a little Democratic wing, uh, but it's the one corporate, pro-bank, pro-war, uh, you sure. know, pro-big business, anti-worker uh, party. And I feel like, um, you know, I feel like the, 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 a new third party needs to be a labor party or, um, or some big people need to join the greens or something like they just need, um, some big ticket people in there. Yeah. It's, it's a, a unit, a unification would be so important. I mean, I, I wish I had the ear of, of some of the people, Jill Stein's somebody, because a lot of people, and yes, there are a lot of people that squabble on the left. I mean, there are, but we have numbers, like so much, and a lot of us call ourselves independent. I'm an independent. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'll, a lot of people, I'm called everything online. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm an independent. I'm a leftist. You know, I, I'm, I'm a socialist. You know, I'm, I'm more left than Bernie Sanders. Right. Uh, but I'm definitely uh, not as left as uh, Stalin and anarchists and stuff like that. So, but so I consider myself, you know, I'm, I'm like a, a Marxist without a party. Yeah. You know, because I don't know where to go. And a lot of people are like that. They don't call them. They don't want to label themselves. We shouldn't label ourselves. Really. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. I'm labeled everything, and they use it against us. Yeah. They use those labels to, as distractions. It's 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 oh look at these shiny objects going all over the place. <laughs> and the reality, they're you know they're reaching in your pocket. It's it's literally that's what they're doing. Yeah. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're reaching out our back pockets while they're showing this, this stuff out here. And, and I understand that there are a lot of people that, that are trying to do I, I, trying to do good work in the Democratic Party. Uh, but I just don't see them making any inroads. And if there were inroads, they would fall apart. And again, you're right. We need a, we need a third party, a real one. And 
even if it meant doing more. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would I wouldn't mind to see more than Third Part. I I love what they do in in, uh, in England uh, right now, and uh, and Wales, and Scotland, and all of the United Kingdom, and Northern Ireland. I'm being accurate because I'm sure if any British people race this, it's like well, not England. There's more to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some of us know our geography, John Oliver. <laughs> well. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that, the parliamentary system is what I would love to see here. Because, I mean, yeah, we'd have to give voices to more extreme right. But I wouldn't mind it if Trump was his own party over there. You know, there was a, that was real. Yeah. Because they would be relegated to, like, UKIP and the BNP. You know, the crazy in the corner. Yes, we know. <laughs> you know, it's and it would really be between... Parties that meant more for the people, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. but we don't have. And those aren't perfect, of course. You know, there's been you know, Theresa May. You know, we, the things are not perfect in parliamentary systems, but it's far better when we have one, one or two parties with the same goal, with the same motivations, profit, right? Same profit, the same motivations. You know, from what I was saying, you know, 1917, same motivations 100 years ago, same motivations now. It's not that long. No. My, my grandparents were, were, were children who were brought here in 1914, just before the United States got involved. Uh, well, actually, not just before. The United States got involved, you know, pretty late in World War One. Um, and I have a lot of historical discussion that I, I won't get into about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, that's my grandparents. You know, they were they were children uh, that could speak and talk. You know, in 1914. Yeah. So it's not that long ago. Yeah. And, and it's like a, it's a, a collective. Uh, amnesia of what the truth was well i think yeah we're in a collective amnesia and a collective awakening but uh and i hope some more people it's it's great to kind of see that what the good keeps me hopeful is just seeing all of the various people waking up and realizing that this is nonsense and they're lying to us and and more and more people are are, are getting involved which is a good thing so uh well darius i really i very much appreciate you supporting the show and coming on here and sharing with us everything that you've been doing and the whole 1917 thing so Appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, man. Thank you. We'll see you. We'll see you next month. Peace.